What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm showing you guys another post list deck profile. Now this deck didn't really get hit or get any support specifically on the ban list, but I built this deck to compete into today's format where it's going to be, I believe, Kostra is still going to be really good, Striker is still going to be really good, especially post ban list with Engage 2. And so this, build, this deck here is built to play post ban list. And the deck we're talking about today is Trap Tricks. I think this deck is just something that's kind of fallen off a little bit, but I still think it's a very powerful deck. And if people are not like prepared for it, um, it can be really, really strong. On top of that, Lightning Storm also went to two. So like weirdly, that's like a good buff for the deck because either people won't be on Lightning Storm or they'll see it less, which means your traps are more safe. Anyway, um, let's get right into the profile, but make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, yeah, let's get right into it. So for the main deck here, we're starting off with three Mermilio, three Mantis, and three Pudica. I think these are the names that you need to be playing three of because they're the best normal summons of the deck. And you really just need to see one of them. Honestly, Pudica is being the best one because she gets you to our garden and garden gets you an extra normal summon. That's why you're able to play nine normal summons in this deck where most decks you don't want to play more than maybe six. Like I think six is a good number. Nine, I think is a lot. However, in this case, you really need to see a name first of all to get all your combos started. But on top of that, like garden gets you the extra normal summon, which is really powerful so these nine uh plus the garden of course i think are mandatory to play and then for our extenders we're playing two of the arachno campa as well as the two of the dionia you only really want to play two and two because these are the cards that you want to pull out of your deck you want to search on top of that uh, it's really nice playing two and two because uh, you can actually side out one and one in games two, games three, depending on the matchup that you're up against. So they just become really easy sideable cards because you don't necessarily want to see those names, right? So that's it for the trap trick monsters, but for our honorary trap trick monsters, three parallel exceed, obviously any one of these names, literally any single one of these names goes into Sarah, which makes exceed live, which means now you're able to, you know, go into rank fours and your link plays a lot more accessibly. So three parallel exceed, I think this is pretty much your trap tricks honorary mention or honor honorary monster um, but yeah that's it for the monsters uh that are not the hand traps essentially i think these are the perfect ratios i don't think i change them up at all because i think it's very consistent and they all do very specific things but things that all synergize well with each other so let's get into the traps here of course we're playing three holtea and then uh, we're playing only five trap hole cards which is the floodgate the bottomless the grave diggers the time space and the trap tricks trap hole nightmare and the only reason you're playing five is because they suck going second, they don't do anything for you going second, and you only really, really need to see one of them to do anything. Like if you open any one of these traps, it's really powerful because Mermelio is gonna be able to pull a trap out of your deck um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's really easy to cycle these and recycle them, I mean, once you get them going, you just don't wanna play too many of them because again, going second, they suck. Even going first, sometimes if you're just opening traps, you're not really able to combo. So this is all you really need. And then Holte is a card that's gonna keep recurring itself as well. So yeah, that's it for the traps essentially. I don't think I change these up at all. I really like uh, time space in today's format for a couple of reasons. I think time space is really good randomly into like Draco Sire, which is gonna be fun now. I think people are gonna be on it because if they go like pen three or whatever, sometime through their combo, I, I think how the standard combo goes is they go pen three before they get like their Savage Dragon on board. And if that's the case, then you go shuffle them all back and it just becomes really powerful. So uh, yeah, these are your traps over here. Wouldn't change these at all. Then for consistency, we're playing three pound prosperity. I think this is pretty standard in most of these kind of trap decks. You really just want prosperity because you're not going for a game a lot of time anyway. So even if you're going second, it's really good. Digging deeper into your deck means that if you don't open a trap, you can now get to a trap. If you don't open a name, you now get to a name. Um, I will say this though, a lot of the time people will um, hit me with the, uh, in the comment section will be like, oh, I don't have prosperity. Uh, what can I swap this with? In terms of draw cards, it is pretty tough. Maybe you can get away with Desires uh, in the deck, but I think Prosperity is just way too powerful. And you can definitely play the deck without it. Like honestly, if you don't wanna play Desires either, you can just play more hand traps. I just think Prosperity makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then another card as well that can be on a little bit on the pricier side and people, people may not have, but I think it's just so powerful in this deck, is three Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir is really good because Essentially, the thing with this deck is it combos really well, but it really has a tough time in the battle phase and pushing for game. Fenrir does that thing for you where it's kind of like, okay, on its own, if you just open this turn one and you just summon it right to your side of the field, it's just a disruption on its own, which is really powerful. But again, in, in turns two, turns three, it can be a board breaker for you because you can summon it, go into battle phase, do battle phase shenanigans. And then the other things it does for you, of course, is just having that big attack so that um, you can now get over opponent's monsters and go for game a little bit easier. But again, if you guys can't have access to these, they could just be more hand traps. And then speaking of hand traps, we're playing nine. So we're playing three Ash, uh, three Drool, 
as well as three imperms. So I think these are just the best nine hand traps of today's format, which is why I'm playing these nine. Ogre is a really good one as well. So again, if you guys don't have Fenrir's, these could be Ogre's. But yeah, I think you definitely need to be playing these hand traps. Keep in mind with Holtea, you have to discard any normal trap. Uh, so I know we were playing a small trap lineup. However, the nice thing is Imperm can count as one of those traps if it really needs to be. And you guys can see I'm not playing evenly matched. That's another card as well, by the way. Um, if you guys don't have access to Fenrir or Prosperity, if you guys pick up the structure deck, the structure deck comes with evenly matched. So you guys can play evenly matched in the main deck as well. So I just wanted to give you guys budget options, but um, for the hand traps, I think these are the best nine that you guys can be playing in today's format. And that's it for the main deck. It's uh, 40 cards in the main deck. Um, I think it's really powerful. I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything really necessary that I would change. I would maybe like to play an extra hand chop or two, but I think the consistency is just way too important. So that's why we're playing the Prosper one pot. So that's it for the main deck. Uh, here real quick, I do want to give a big shout out to one of the channel sponsors, Smart Cards TCG. Check them out. A link is in the description. You guys can use my code for 10% off. Essentially, they do these metal field centers. Uh, last time, I don't know if you guys watched the last deck profile, we had a Blue Eye Shining. This is a Zeus one. They're metal, they're really good quality. They have an NFC chip, which means that you can tap it with your phone and then you can connect it to a YouTube channel or a website or whatever you want to link it to, which is really nice. So that is uh, that, shout out to Smart Cards. But moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing uh, three Trap Tricks era, of course. This is uh, your link one. I mean, you have to be playing three. It's, it's your best card in your deck, honestly. And then one Adipus. Adipus does help you go for game a little bit and it helps you link climb into access code if you needed to because it's a link three. And then we're playing two Rafflesia as well as one Pingicula. This is, I think, all you need for the Trap Tricks monsters. Uh, I'm not playing Alamaris. Um, well, actually, I'm going to get into that in a little bit because you guys are going to see that this extra deck is actually only 12 cards. I'll tell you guys why in a little bit. But two Rafflesia is mandatory and one Pingicula to get your combos going. Uh, one Exoton Knight is still really, really powerful. Baguska, of course, is really powerful as well. Uh, Time Thief, Redoer is so strong. But on top of that, in the mirror match, it, like, it literally just becomes like Redoer control because Redoer is just so powerful in the mirror match as well. And then we're playing the one Zeus, of course, because we're playing all these Ixies monsters. And then we're playing one Asa because... Uh, so in the Kostra matchup, which I th still think is going to be really powerful, you can take your opponent's Fenrir because all of your trap tricks are Earth which means that if you're able to make an Asa and your opponent's playing Kasha and they have a Fenrir in their graveyard, you can then take your opponent's Fenrir, activate its effect, search your own Fenrir, and then you can link them away or you can use the Fenrir, etc., etc. So uh, yeah, so definitely one of those things where I think Asa is just way too important to not be playing. This is only 12. So you guys are going to see here, it's only 12 in the extra deck and I'm going to show you guys why. So these 12, I think are mandatory. Um, and then I have five cards here that I kind of want to talk about that could be your 13th, 14th, 15th card. And uh, that's these cards over here. So uh, Alamaris is one of those cards that's okay. It can come up here and there. I'm not personally like playing it right now, like you guys saw, but it's a card that you guys can play. It does a lot of cool things for the deck as well. Now this package here, you guys are seeing we're not playing any Therions, but you can still play this package because essentially what this package lets you do is it lets you go into a, a, a four material Zeus, which means that you can Zeus twice, which is really nice. So you guys can play that package if you want to for the Zeus. Um, I don't know if people, or Mathmech specifically, post ban list. I don't know if they're gonna be on Ibli because I know some of the lists were on Ibli locks. And if you guys are scared of Ibli, the nice thing about this deck is it does focus on Link summoning anyways. But if you guys are scared of Ibli, uh, Link Garibo can be pretty powerful as well. And then same thing with your Boral Sword. Uh, I think this is really powerful. I also noticed that I don't have access code in here. So this could be access code as well. Um, just different options for you guys. So you guys can saw there's 12 in the main deck that are essentially solidified in the extra deck. And then the five cards here or the access code is the sixth card. You pick any three of them, make it 15 cards. So uh, yeah, that's it for the extra deck. I just wanted to give you guys different options. I haven't tested too much with any of these like in particular. So that's why I've kind of been back and forth with these ones. And yeah, so obviously through more testing, I probably find the optimal ratios, but with that, it's been pretty good with me. For the side deck here, I'm gonna show you guys a side deck quick, but keep in mind, side decks are always gonna be built based off of your locals and how your locals looks like. So we're playing three Gamma Seal. I think with for purely and stuff, you need the Kaijus. One Harpy's Feather Duster for back row matchups, and then three Evenly Mash also for back row matchups. Evenly is really powerful into Labyrinth, into the Mirror Match, etc., etc. And it's another normal trap for you, which is really nice. So these are our go second cards. And then for our go first cards, we're playing three Anti Spell. I think Anti Spell is, is going to be so powerful in today's format. Into Branded, it's good. Into Koshtar, it's good. Into Striker, it's good. Into Super Heavy, it's good. It's just so good into so many different things. Into Draco Slayer, it's good. So I think you need to mandatory be playing three Anti Spell. And then and we're playing three judgment of course so that when we're going first games two or games three we don't lose the evenly and all those kind of cards as well and then lastly for the last two cards we're playing two d barrier i think d barrier is still really good in today's format because mana dome is a thing branded is a thing and if you just call like fusion against branded or synchro against mana dome synchro against dragon link is pretty good as well uh, so i think barrier is still really important to play but keep in mind the side deck here is always going to be
really up to your locals and how your locals is, is built like. If your locals is all Kashtra players, side more for Kashtra. If your locals is all a bunch of rogue players, side more for rogue. Um, this is more just a template for you guys to use. Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, I hope the extra deck explanation wasn't too long. It wasn't too complicated. But I really wanted to show you guys that there's only really 12 cards that you need in the extra deck. And then the other three cards can really be up to personal preference. Uh, depending on your play style and whatnot. But that's it for the deck post ban list. I think this deck is gonna be very underrated. And I think it's one of those things where people are not gonna be ready for it and they're not gonna account for it. It's one of those things where if they're not prepared for it, I think it can be really powerful and catch a lot of people off guard. I see the, I see the camera turning. What are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you, Alpha, for filming. Um, and that's really all I gotta say. So with that, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, thanks.